Hey everybody, welcome to art class. It's Mr. Eckert. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's lesson is about the elements of art. The elements of art are the basic building blocks that we make all the other bits out of when we're creating. We're going to talk about line, shape, value, form, and color. It's also important that we learn about the principles of design, but we'll get to those later. When we talk about the elements of art and the principles of design, it's sort of like talking about the ingredients and the recipe when you're baking. The elements of art are kind of like the ingredients. You have line, shape, value, form, and color. When you're making cookies, you have flour, sugar, milk, chocolate chips, etc. If you only have flour, sugar, eggs, vanilla, etc., but you don't know how to put them together, you don't end up with cookies. You end up with a weird lump of stuff in your oven. So we have to have the principles of design, and we'll learn about those later, in order to tell you how to put the elements of art together in an effective way. Today we're just going to cover the basics, and we'll learn about what they are. The first element of art we're going to learn about is line. Line is the path of a point moving through space. So a point is an imaginary thing. It's a spot in space and time. It's imaginary. We can represent it by just putting a dot on the page. So if we look right here, we can trace a little dot moving through space. And there we have a bunch of areas where the, the point was as it moved. If we connect all these dots, we can see where the point moved. And now we have a line. There are many kinds of lines. Um, we can start with a basic line. We can just have a line. We can draw a line that is darker by pressing our pencil harder. We can draw a line that's lighter by pressing lighter with our pencil, less pressure. We can have a zigzag line. We can have a curvy line. We can have a squiggly line. We can make lines that start dark and go light. This is called varied line. Varied line can also go light to dark. You can also go dark light, dark light, dark light, etc. We vary our line weight in order to bring emphasis to certain things. So if you want to make your viewers look at something, it's usually a good idea to put a little heavier line on that. There are different effects that we can achieve when we use different line weights. And we'll talk about those in the future. For today, we're just covering the basics of the elements of art. So we have line, which is a path of point, the path of a point moving through space. We have line, which is the path of a point moving through space. We have different types of lines. And we can create our lines in different ways. Take a few moments and draw your own normal line, heavy line, light line, zigzag line, curvy line, squiggly line, and then three varied lines. One that starts dark and goes to light, one that starts light and goes to dark, and one that goes from dark to light to dark to light and back again a couple times in the course of your line. Once you're done with that, we can move on. The next element of art we're going to talk about, after line, is shape. Shape is an enclosed area created by using one of the other, other elements of art. A shape is an enclosed area created by using one of the other elements of art. The most basic way to draw a shape is with line. So let's draw a couple of shapes. Here we have a circle, we have a triangle, we can draw a square, 
That's a really awful square. Now let's try using another element of art. Let's use shapes to make shapes. Here I've made a circle out of circles. I could make a triangle out of triangles or a square out of squares. That's one element of art you can make into others. Uh, if we use value, and we'll talk about that just in a moment, you might know it as shading. We can also make a triangle. So let's make a triangle out of shading. Make it nice and pointy. There we go. All right. So all I've done is shade a little bit of an area, but inside I have a triangle. We've made a triangle out of shading and we've made a circle out of circles. You can do this with any of the elements of art. You just have to get a little bit creative. So shape is an enclosed area created by using one of the other elements of art. We have two different types of shapes. The first is geometric. These are the ones that you find in math class. Go ahead and think of a couple examples of shapes you've heard of in math class. We already have a couple examples here, the circle, triangle, and square. See if you can come up with a few more. Take just a moment. Great. The other type of shapes we have are organic. And these are the sort of shapes that are found in nature. Now, will you occasionally find a square, circle, or triangle in nature? Sure, the world does all sorts of crazy things. Generally speaking, you're not gonna find perfect geometric forms in nature. It's just not the way things are. You're gonna get a lot more organic, normal, natural shapes that just kind of occur by themselves. These are gonna be things like trees and rocks and lakes. Any number of things that aren't mathematical shapes are organic. The easiest way to tell is if you've heard of it in math class or there's a formula, it's probably geometric. If it's organic, there's probably not a formula for it. There are a couple of tricky ones. We'll touch base on those later. The next element of art we're going to talk about is value. Value which you probably know as shading, is the relative lightness or darkness in art. When we talk about relative darkness and lightness, we're talking about the human visual range. When we say pure white, we're talking about the brightest thing in the universe. So like neutron stars. If we're talking about the darkest thing in the universe, we're talking about something like dark energy or even a black hole, which technically isn't perfectly black, but I digress. Um, in the art world, we're talking about things that are very dark, like my shirt, or things that are very bright, like this paper. Those are our black and white points when we're talking about value in art. When we talk about value, we're talking about making light to dark using our pencil. The easiest way to do this is to break up some space and then practice making specific values across a range. We'll call this a value chart. I'll do a quick one right here with just five values so you can see what they look like. So we'll start here on the left. We'll leave this one perfectly white. We're not gonna put anything in there. I like to start light and go progressively darker when I make my value charts, because usually that's the way you're gonna make art. You're gonna start light, sketch things in, add light shadows, and then continue to make the details stronger and stronger until they're really where you want them to be. So I'm gonna start in my second square, and I'm going to lightly shade that in. Notice I'm very, very lightly going over the entire square in a slightly loopy rounded stroke. For more information about how to properly use a pencil, check out the tutorial video in Canvas. In our next box, I'm going to press a little bit harder. I haven't made the box a ton darker, but I have added a little bit extra value. In the next one, I'm gonna go darker still. In the last box, I'm just going to press as hard as I can without damaging the art surface. You can see that there's a distinct change between each box. I'm only using one pencil. There are multiple pencils that you can use to make this a little bit easier. Next, I'm going to make another value scale, but this time I'm not gonna divide it up. I'm just going to slowly make it darker from one side to the other. This is kind of like shading real things. So we're just gonna start here, nice and light. And get a little bit darker as we go. We don't want to press a little, a lot harder, just a teeny little bit harder as we go. And you can backtrack and add more graphite, and that will also help to darken your value scale. 
simply because more graphite will be covering the white of the page. When I'm doing my value scale, I want it to be as smooth as possible without seeing those breaks like the lines. And in order to do that, I'm using a rounded loopy stroke and I'm backtracking to make sure that I fill in areas cleanly. You wanna go a little bit over and then kind of come back this way and then kind of go back a little bit over this way. Kind of fill those areas in. So now you can see I've created a gradient. We'll call this blocks and we'll call this a gradient. When we make our charts, they'll be in blocks just to see how the material works. When you're actually doing artwork, most of the time, you're going to be using a gradient, which is smooth from light to dark and shows the surface. The last element of art we're going to talk about today is form. Form is what happens when you combine shape plus value. Form is the approximation of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. When we're talking about two-dimensional and three-dimensional in art and in math class, we're talking about on a flat surface. Normally, you could have a grid like this in math class where you have the horizontal grid is the X and the vertical axis is the Y. You can plot different things on this in order to do different mathy things. In three dimensions, you would have that same X and Y axis, but there's an additional third axis that kind of comes this way. That is what we call the Z axis. The Z axis is coming forward and backward. That is what gives us our sense of space in art. We do this with certain drawing techniques, including value. Let's see a few examples of how value works. We're gonna take a look at the cylinder. The cylinder is essentially an ellipse with two lines and another ellipse on the bottom. We won't normally see this back line, but I'll leave it there for, for now. We're gonna have our light source. We'll learn about this later. But whenever we have a light source, it casts a shadow, and that's how we can tell where the light's gonna be going. We'll make a little sun. Start here. We can find the middle of our thing there. We can make a little dotted line that connects it. We'll go over this later. For now, just watch and grasp the concept. So our light's on this side. That means the light side's gonna be over here and the dark side is gonna be going this way. I'm gonna quickly shade this in just so you can see what happens. You'll notice that as I'm drawing, as I want to apply more pressure to the paper for darker values, I will slowly move my hand up on the pencil until I'm closer to the tip. The closer I am to the tip of the pencil, the more weight I can apply. If I stay farther back, it tends to dig into the paper and not be as smooth. So as I'm moving here, I can apply more pressure by doing this. The next thing I'm going to do is use some sideways lines in order to show the curvature a little bit more. This also helps me fill in this bottom area so it looks nice. And it also smooths all of my values. You can see now that this cylinder has the appearance that it is rounded because it's lighter on one side and darker on the other. If we wanna get fancy, we can do the inside as well. You can see in here, I'm using that rounded loopy stroke again. It's very, very useful for making sure that things are nicely blended and smooth. Add a little bit darker shadow right here. So the back of this recedes a little bit more. And there you have it the basic idea of form. We can see that it looks more three-dimensional as though it has an inside and an outside just from the use of value and shape together. That concludes our lesson for today on the elements of art. Be sure to stay tuned for our next lesson which will focus on line specifically so we can learn a little bit more about that element of art. Until then, have a great day, do some art, and we'll see you next time.
Bye-bye.